Hey guys, what's going on? I'm EJ. I want to talk a little bit about the TV show, Stiesel. This is a TV show that I've been watching for a while. Watched the first two seasons. A lot of you guys might not like it because it's it's in um, it's entirely in Hebrew, and some of it is in Yiddish, and some of it is in English, but most of it is in Hebrew. And it said that it takes place in. Geula Israel, Geula Israel, a part of Jerusalem, a suburb of the Miyasharim neighborhood of um, Jerusalem. It centers around the life of this one family, the Stiesel family, headed by uh, Shalom Stiesel, the patriarch, who was played by Doug Glickman. And it also um, revolves around the life of Akiva Shlisha, who is played by Michael Ohlone, a very famous Israeli um, soap opera actor, and it also stars Neda Riskin, who plays the part of the sister. <coughs> And, you know, it talks about this family and how they survive. First of all, Akiva is trying to get married within the Orthodox Jewish tradition. He's trying to um, find him, find himself a wife, and he's not having any luck. They're doing the Shiduk, which is the traditional Jewish um, matchmaking, and he's coming up short because one girl he finds is way too emotional. But he's a teacher at his father's school. He's a teacher at his father's day school, yeshiva. And he encounters this little boy, his name is Israel. And he, and Akiva takes a liking to his mother. So Akiva, and the mother develop a kind of, uh, the mother Elisheva, they develop a kind of relationship with each other. But then Elisheva reveals to Akiva that she's kind of old. She takes off her shtetl, which is the, the wig that Orthodox, um, usually Hasidic uh, Orthodox women wear. And she reveals that she has gray hair and that she's too old for him that he should find someone younger. And then um, I love that scene because. It's showing him like the love he cannot have. He, he, he yearns for this love of this woman, Elisheva, but he cannot have her. So finally, um, you know, she moves away. She goes, she immigrates to London, and um, he doesn't see her anymore. And uh, he starts to fall. There's a funeral in his family. There's a death in his family, the death of his grandmother, Malka. And his uncle, Reb Nachim, has to come back. And during this time, he falls in love with a woman by the, na by the name of Libby, who he didn't know initially was his cousin. So the second season is all about the cousin and him getting together, will they, won't they? But the thing is that Akiva wants to be married. Akiva yearns to be married because before his mother passed away, that was her dying wish. And her last son, Akiva, would be married. Um, you know, the other one's Vi Arya. He's a singer. And that was his desire to be an Orthodox Jewish singer. In a, in a synagogue. But his father always discouraged that because just like with Akiva, Akiva is an artist. Um, the father believed that art was a pathway into the secular society. And he never wanted that for either of his sons. So Zviaria has a good, a good voice. Akiva paints. And um, the sister Gidi She's more the motherly type player by Nina Riskin. But the problem here is that 
her husband, Libby, goes off to do business in Argentina and cheats on her with a Latina woman, a non-Jewish woman. And when she hears that it's a non-Jewish woman, a shiksa, a goya, a goyish woman, she flips out. And it's just one scene where she's she's in the, the store and she sees a, a, I presume a Colombian or a Venezuelan woman um, talking on the phone in Spanish and she's just like, oh, you shakes up, blah, blah, blah. You know, just, just ranting and raving on a, to this woman and it's obvious that she uh, is very angry because Libby left her home with, with the children, the two boys and um, Shiri, um, and um, the youngest daughter, Ruhami, uh, played by Shiri Haas. And Ruhami is old enough to know what her dad did. And she starts to go into her mother's phone and she even gets a file on the phone one day when he tries to call and she calls him a Nazi. She said, don't come back, you're a Nazi. She posts stuff all around town, a bunch of Lashon Hara about, um, about her dad that he's a Nazi. And she even imagines in her mind an old Western scene where she shoots her father. She, she, she's, so, she's so angry what he did. Not only did he cheat, he shaved off his, his pay as his side knock. He shaved off his beard. And there's this one scene where he's sitting in a woman's room with a cross and just crying. His heart and soul out. So he did something that was really bad, really bad. But the rabbi just tells um, Giddy to just forget about it. Um, you know, to forgive him, take him back. So when he comes back to Israel, she forgives him and she tells him to come about a Jew, about to, about um, about a Teshuva. I mean, as a born again Jew, just, you know, ask for forgiveness from God and you'll get forgiveness from God. And they, they eventually move on with their lives. But with Ruhami, again, she's never the same. She lacked that father figure, so she went and found it in a yeshiva boy that she was going to school. She discovered him, and he, um, uh, you know, she discovered that he was lonely. He was just studying his books day and night. That he was a serious yeshiva bocher, a serious yeshiva, a yeshiva student, but that he was lonely. You know, so eventually they have this crazy idea, him and her, that they're going to get married. <laughs> so the funniest part is Ruhami goes to her dad and, and he, she tells the dad that they got married in this cafe that they all go to called Anchins. Right? In reference to Yentu. They go to this cafe to get traditional Jewish food, go Kugel or whatever. And um, it says, oh, I'm married to um, uh, uh, this young man. Father flips out. Father tells her to get out of the home. She's no longer invited. Who is she to get married? And... They leave and they live in this little shack. Eventually the father comes around and gets them an apartment. But the mother, Giddy, thinks it is complete foolishness. That she should return home and she should, come fin she should finish her studies. Because she felt like she gave it all up to marry Libby. And look what Libby did. And she don't want the same thing for her. Um, she, uh, she don't want the same thing for her daughter. She wants something different from her daughter, which their options are very limited as Orthodox 
Jewish women in Israel in terms of the success that they can become. You know, but it, it, it is showing you what the things in it, um, the things that they go to. One thing, though, the family is very happy that it's a serious yeshiva student. He takes his religion serious and he wants to study Torah all night. But the wife is not very happy. Rahami, because she, one scene, she prepares a meal and she, and he doesn't come home until like midnight. And she's like, man, what kind of life and relationship is this going to be? And then he wants to go off to Safed, which is the, in the northern part of Israel to study, um, study, and just leave her at home. And the, and the, and the wife is like, well, Giddy's like, well, what kind of marriage um, is this? That he, he's just abandoning you. And he's not treating you as a, a husband or to treat a wife. And also with marriage is Shalom. His wife died in the beginning, and he's been alone. As a patriarch, he's been trying to hold it down, but he's had relationships or friendships, I might say, with several other women. Until finally, the one matchmaker wants to actually settle down with him. Because after he falls, he realizes he can't really live on his own. He needs help. So he marries this matchmaker, but he's not in love with him. And none of his kids are fond of him. And even a famous scene where he takes the mother to the nursing home. Right? And... The mother basically curses this woman out, tells this woman off. <laughs> and then, and then <laughs> it's like, he only got married to her because he needed some help. You know, he didn't really love her. He still loves his wife. He still took the bottle of brandy out to the porch where he and his wife used to drink in order to um, drink with her, with her dead spirit. Amazing. The show ended with a cliffhanger because Akiva had um, a famous art expedition and he got accepted to go to New York and just do his art. But, um, but the question is. Will he give up Libby to go do his art? Because his uncle made a deal with him that if he stays in Israel and he studies Torah and he becomes a serious yeshiva student and gives up the art, they can get married. If not, they can't. And the guy offering it him to him, this Kaufman guy, is a secular Jew. He's a gay, he's a gay Jew. Uh, from Tel Aviv, right? And he wants to he wants Akiva to be a big time celebrity, a big time star. But um, and Akiva Akiva does this painting of his mother, um, and when um, Shalom finds out about it, he destroys the painting because he accuses his son of trying to profit off his mother. Trying to make it big off his mother. So it's kind of like, does Akiva choose between New York, his success of what he wants in life, and his religious duties? And I love this one scene in season two where they go up to a lake and um, they're, they're burying the Sefer Torah, they're burying the Torah scroll that is no longer legible. And um, as they're doing that, um, Akiva is in the Dead Sea and he's looked floating. And you can see his hair out. It looked like Jesus Christ. You know, it was very, it was very profound.
seen considering the fact that it's a Jewish it's a Jewish uh, produced show and you know you're Jewish with, with Christianity. I thought it was pretty cool. And also another cliffhanger they left us with is who are the parents of Muhammad's boyfriend? Anyway, yeah, who are the who are the the who are the parents of this kid? Because we've never seen them. They've never shown up. They've gone to several Shabbat dinners with the Shlisa family. They've gone to several holidays with the Shlisa family. But then when it was time to get a proper marriage, they finally accepted him into their family. After finally um Giddy realizing this was the same boy who was an orphan and she was an orphan that she fed when they were going to divorce court. She finally realized that he was a good kid. And that but Rahami reached out to his dad and his dad said he would be there at the wedding and wasn't. So the big mystery is who's this kid's father and why was this kid thrown out to live in the basement of a synagogue? We don't know if season three is going to come on, but I would like for it to come on. I would like to see. I honestly thought that when Rahami was going through the things she was going through, I thought she was going to be off the derrick. I thought she was going to leave the Jewish religion. But she didn't, so. Uh, if anything, it only made her stronger in the Jewish religion. Um, we don't really encounter um, secular Israel. I mean, um, we count the secular Israelis. We don't really encounter um, Arabs in this. More centered around um, inter-Jewish. Inter Dynamics, and we don't even encounter uh, Sephardim uh, people only for the time that Sean's daughter, other, other daughter, is married to a Sephardic himself from the Chabad sect. So it's a pretty good show. Like I said, it's a glimpse into um, into what life is like in Israel for the ultra-Orthodox. They were going to do one like that starring Natalie Portman in Brooklyn. Well, the dynamics don't work the same, I don't think. Because one of the things that you'll see in this show is that in Israel, the ultra-Orthodox people, they don't honor um, Israeli Independence Day, which is May 14th. They don't serve in the army. So there's one scene when Shalom is this principal at the school where it's Israeli Independence Day and he doesn't do, he doesn't um, do anything because in typical Haredi fashion, 
to disagree with, you know. It shows the disagreements that the ultra-Orthodox have with the secular Zionists who run the state of Israel. So, as Reb Nachum says, the Zionists, the animals. <laughs> it's funny, Reb Nachum. But anyway, yeah, check out that show, man. It's like I said, it's hard to understand the older folks like Malka, they speak Yiddish and stuff, and, and the young and the young people speak Hebrew. And it's very little English, but the dynamics are, are really great. Peace.